Right. This is our Topic 6 Cycle 1 homework video on harmonic motion in waves. So let's start with harmonic motion, uh, the type of motion that we looked at in our Explore Lab. So simple harmonic motion is a repetitive motion, and it involves a restoring force, or um, a force that returns the returns the the bob, if it's the pendulum, or whatever the object is, to the same spot, a point of equilibrium. And the restoring force moves opposite the direction, is opposite the direction of displacement. It takes the same amount of time for each cycle, leaving the object in the same place. So here, there, we have a ball bouncing up and down on a slinky or a spring. So it comes up and then back to the same place, down and here. Now note that in this case, because it's moving up at this point, this is not one cycle, that's half a cycle. It has to be back to the same place. So it has to complete its full range of motion and then be back to the same place. So from here to here is a half cycle. We have to get back, it goes back down and back up. So from here to here is one full cycle. And then we see another half cycle here. So one and a half cycles are represented in this picture as time goes on. Pendulum is another example. So don't confuse that with linear motion. Motion in a straight line. This is um, the pendulum the bob, which is the thingy at the end, always has an unbalanced force on it while it's moving. It's always being pulled back, except for when it's right in the very middle, um, noting that gravity is affecting it and that it's not moving in a straight line at any point. So a cycle of harmonic motion. One complete cycle of harmonic motion leaves an object in the same place in which it started. So a simple pendulum. So we start at point A, Go to point B there, the point of equilibrium, then point C, back to point B, back to point A, one cycle. The um, period, capital T, is the time that takes. So how long does one take? So that means an object follows a path from its starting point and then returns back to the same spot after making an entire journey through the cycle. So let's talk about frequency and period. So frequency is how many cycles occur per second. Remember that the period was how many seconds per cycle. So all they are is inverse. So to solve for frequency, we just take one divided by the period. And that flips cycles and seconds for us. So we get the uh, reciprocal, um, where f is frequency and capital T is period. Period, in the same way, one divided by the frequency. Because um, the period describes how long one cycle takes, whereas the frequency is how many cycles occur in one second. Um, frequency is measured in hertz, cycles per second. Uh, period is measured in seconds, so how many seconds for one cycle. So again, they're just flipping uh, numerator and denominator there to solve for frequency and period because their inverses of amplitude is describing the maximum distance an object in harmonic motion moves from its center position. Uh, we measure that in meters as it's a distance, so how far we go from the center position. So in this case of our pendulum, we have a horizontal distance and then a height. Um, an amplitude of a wave would be like how, how far above that crest goes and below the normal sea level the trough goes when you see waves in the ocean. Whereas that green line through the middle represents the level of the ocean where there are no waves at all. Force. So I mentioned this before, it allows an object in harmonic motion to return to its starting point. So it always pulls opposite the direction of the displacement so that which is the change in the distance from the center of the point of equilibrium so if we had no friction what we'd see is that this just would go on forever back and forth how are we're going to have friction on the spring and its interaction with whatever it's attached to um, in this case it looks like the springs on the floor too and then the ball itself so we would what we'd end up seeing is it, it dampening over time till eventually it stopped because of that unbalanced force on it with friction however if there's no friction all we would have is just the restoring force going back and forth um, pulling it back and forth, left and right. Now, it, here, when it gets compressed, the force is, um, it got compressed to the left, so the displacement was to the left, so the restoring force, force is to the right. Here, at the point of equilibrium, there is no restoring force right there at that point, because the spring is back to its point of equilibrium where it would be if it wasn't squished or stretched. If I stretch the spring out to the right, pictured here in the third one, then my force is to the left. So it's an elastic force, and we studied that. Then remember the F equals negative KX, Hooke's law, that the amount of force is opposite in direction to the displacement. Um, and in, then you multiply the spring constant, which depends on how hard or soft the spring is, you know, like a ballpoint pen versus an automotive spring. 
times x the distance of displacement measured in meters. In the case of the pendulum, this is due to gravity pulling down and the tension in the string pulling up and towards the center position. So again, restoring force, the, um, there's tension holding up the bob, which is the red ball here in this case, the thing at the end of the pendulum. And then we have gravity pulling the ball down. So as I give it gravitational potential energy by pulling it up to the right, the restoring force is pulling it back to the left, back towards that point of equilibrium. Um, and the force is greater given that it's further away, the restoring force. All right, we're going to pause right now for the multiple choice question. What is the relationship between period T and frequency F? Feel free to go back in the video to take a look at period and frequency and see how they relate. And then make the best answer choice of these. Okay, waves. So an oscillation, a repeated vibration uh, that transfers energy from one place to another. So that's what we have in the case of a wave. And we're going to look at how similar a pendulum and waves pictured here in the ocean really are. Um, so some examples of different types of waves include TV, radio, cell phone transmission, uh, traffic lights, ripples in a pond, x-rays, MRIs, uh, waves in the ocean, and sound waves, all different types. Properties of a wave. Frequency, that means how many cycles per second. Period, remember the inverse, how many seconds per cycle. Amplitude, how far we move from the uh, point of equilibrium. Remember, that's not the crest minus the trough. That would be half of that value because the point of amplitude is in the middle of the crest and the trough. So if we found the difference between the crest and the trough, we would need to divide that by 2 to find the amplitude because it's saying how, how far above and below that point of equilibrium our waves go. And we have speed of the wave, and then we have the wavelength. Um, the wavelength is from one crest to one crest, or like the, the, uh, the distance um, in order between waves, so from one trough to one trough. Remember, though, it's not if we're at the point of equilibrium, you'd have to go through two of those to get to the wavelength. So wherever I measure it from, the wavelength would be the same. But because the wave's going down here and up here, that's not that's only a half of a period, only half of a wavelength. A full wavelength brings it back here. Now notice the wavelength is a distance, the period is a time. So just note that difference. So don't confuse this with harmonic motion, which energy moves back and forth repeatedly until dissipating. A wave can be something that transmits and propagates forward. It doesn't go back and forth like a pendulum. Energy in a wave moves through a medium like water by moving the water itself up and down, uh, moving it back to the same place, while the energy is what continues to move in the direction the wave is moving. That means energy is coming out from the ocean towards the shore, and it transmits and it trans it's trans emitting in that direction towards the shore, but the wave itself, the amplitude, is up and down. So that's perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to the energy transfer. Again, if you're standing on the beach, the energy is coming at you, but you see the wave going up and then down. So again, those two directions, the energy transfers towards you, but the wave itself, its amplitude is going up and down. That's perpendicular to that energy transfer. So transverse versus longitudinal waves. That ocean wave that I just spoke of is a transverse wave. That means that um, energy is propagating in this case from the hand towards the right but the amplitude is going up and down again perpendicular to the energy transfer energy transfers left and right amplitudes up and down however a longitudinal wave the um, the displacement the amplitude is in the direction of the energy transfer so here there's two examples of a slinky on the bottom here we're just holding it on the table and pushing it back and forth and those compressions get sent as energy through the slinky, but the compression or the amplitude is in the same direction as the energy transfer. We'd measure from one compression to the next compression, or one expansion to the next expansion to find the wavelength. So here we have compression to compression. So because that amplitude is in the same direction as the, trans as the transfer of energy, it's a longitudinal wave. So sound is a longitudinal wave. Um, so transverse waves have oscillations perpendicular to the way to the direction the wave moves. Um, longitudinal waves have vibrations in the same direction as a wave as waves move. Let's look at calculations. So calculating speed, frequency, wavelength, and period of a wave. Again, the amplitude is the distance from the point of equilibrium to the top of the wave. Or if we had crest to trough, we would just find that difference and divide it by two. 
the wavelength is the distance between um, points. So like if, if we're looking at the waves in the ocean, it'd be the distance between the peak of those waves or their troughs. Um, just remember that coming back to the point of equilibrium, the wave has to be going in the same direction. So again, here to here is a half wavelength, but if I go from here all the way back to there, that's a whole wavelength. And then there's two and a half wavelengths pictured here. And then the period is the amount of time it takes for one wave, like one crest to crest, or one trough to trough, for one cycle to... Um, so, the wavelength is distance from crest to crest, or trough to trough. The period of the wave is the time it takes through one cycle. And the period is the time for one cycle. Frequency is the complete cycles for one second, just like we looked at in harmonic motion. The speed of a wave is distance over time, right? So in terms of a wave, that distance is the wavelength. Time is the period. That leads us to this formula. Wavelength over period, which is frequency times wavelength. So the frequency of waves times our wavelength is the speed of waves. So again, um, one wave that moves incredibly fast would be light, right? Electromagnetic wave. Um, much faster than sound. So different mediums, like different uh, substances that a wave trans goes through, are part of what determines speed. So the speed of a wave, we have V equals frequency times wavelength, and that's the symbol we have for wavelength. Frequency is hertz, that's cycles per second. Wavelength is meters, that's a distance. And remember, speed is measured in meters per second. Okay, here's our free response question. Describe the difference between a transverse and a longitudinal wave. Be sure to compare the direction of oscillation to the direction of the energy transfer. Feel free to go back in the video, and then it's a good idea to look back at this before quiz time.